I'm Isander. And I'm Coda. And today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be covering one of the most hotly contested topics out there in 40k, and that is which Primark is best Primark. It's a very simple one, but yeah, it's still debated to this day. Whose space dad is the best space dad? Whose Primark is best Primark? Yeah, no, it's, 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 my, it's, it's the equivalent of my dad can beat up your dad. My dad is Microsoft. Yeah, pretty much. Um, all of them, I'm just going to say this in the beginning, all of them are a lot. Even the worst one on this list is still really mortifying. That's not to undersell them at all. They're just being compared. It's demigods being compared to demigods, you know? Like, the floor of this list is still higher than the ceiling for pretty much everything else. They can accomplish a lot just by themselves. But uh, we have to figure out how to scale them, you know? Because uh, they they kind of work like Pokemon, in a way. Because... Okay, because hear me out on this. They were all made with specific things in mind, and so certain matchups are sweeps. It you know, it it just it just makes sense. You send the guy who is meant to build a religion against the man literally too angry to die. I'm sorry, religion guy. It's, it's a little tough. It's a little tough. It's gonna be a hard fight for you. And so the best way to be fairest to all of them is to judge them based on. What they were made to do, if that may, like, like I mean, the most in the most broad strokes sense, what the emperor made them to do, and that is to just be generals, really, really effective generals. Some had plans afterwards, and when we get there, we'll, we'll give them credit where it's due. Like Magnus is one where he had plans beyond being just a general; it wasn't just be the big commander. Um, but some didn't, honestly. Some didn't. They were just be the general man. They were just. You are military general, the guy. Thank you. And so we're going to split them up into like two categories where they're going to pick up points that I have very cleverly named command and conquer. It's, 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 yes, it's, it's, it's really straightforward. It's to give the ones who are really, really powerful on their own a chance while also paying respect to the ones who individually they're not that bad. But you look at the whole legion, you're like, oh, dear God, how that do you ma- deal? Yeah, that makes exactly. sense. Yeah. And, very straightforward. Command is not good. They are commanding, conquering is how boned you are when they individually arrive. Because some of the primarchs, because I mean, we're also counting their legions in this too. It's like it's like who would be the best at being just a general, considering everything they have, right? And so some of the primarchs' legions, eh, some of them even hate their legions, but on their own, oh my god, they're pretty it's, good. If, they, they stand, they can, some of them are one-man armies. One of them has squatted a titan. I'm not joking, that's a thing, one of them's done. Just like, actually raw squatted a titan. Who? We'll get there when we get there. No, no spoilers. Then let's go. But, yeah, but uh, that way, that way it's, it's fair to everyone because, you know, if you can squat a titan, you should get points for that. But also, you know, flattening a child's sandcastle is fairly simple and easy. It's not, it's not that difficult. Anyone can do it. What's more impressive is getting that kid to keep building you sandcastles after you leave. And so that's where some of the others are going to pick up points. I can tell that's already in reference to Kurz. No. Kurz is a... I'll, I'll spoil it right now. He's a flat in the sandcastle kind of person. He's a, he's a... Actually, no. He's the... I will show you the horrors of what sand can do unto you. And you have to deal with that now. Um, so it it's... It's... it's the easiest way to look at it is you're grading your substitute teachers. You know, there's the ones who'd come in and it's like, oh my God, you're better than the real teacher. Please never go. And there's other ones who'd show up, split the class into two teams for dodgeball, pick one team at random, and just start welting you. <laughs> Those are the two kinds of substitutes we have on the list today, okay? Both are valid. <laughs> because I can't lie, that sub made do- dodgeball way more fun. You had to dodge it, or you'd get bruised. There was no debate. <laughs> and and so we're also going to be going in the order that they were found backwards. So we're going to start with the last one found and with the first one found. That way, it's, because that's that's the most consistent way we can do it. It's it's a, it's a known list. Yeah, there's no preference. That makes sense. Yeah, exactly. Starting with the last of the bunch to be discovered, Omegon. Lord of the Serpents, Lorem, Ipsum, Sussy, Baca. They are the single strongest Primarch by leaps and bounds. Never underestimate the power of information warfare. And it's it's the biggest way we wage wars today. It's the biggest way they wage wars in the future. But, you know, they just drop churches 
for morbid every now and then. Omegon reigns supreme over all of them in the Emperor's side. For all we know, it could be him on the Golden Throne as we speak. And for that reason, he is easily F tier. Because if our S tier is Dad could die tomorrow and I'd replace him, for all we know, Omegon's already done it. He's the hunter that stalks the Imperium itself and or its savior. Next up on the list is Corvus Corax. And I won't mince words, he's a lot. He's one of those ones that's undersold a bit, um, just because he doesn't, he, he, he's one of those ones that needs more books. I feel like he needs more books. Um, and he's also, we haven't heard much from him, Reese, like pretty much Reese at all since the heresy. There's things. I mean, to be fair, he does seem like the kind of guy who doesn't want to be heard about a lot. Yeah, no, pretty much. Uh, it's hit and run tactics. Uh, he has the ability to literally disappear before, like, I'm not talking he's sneaky. I am talking he's invisible. He, like, leaves vision. He's he gone. He cannot be seen. And he is... Here's the thing about Korax that gets him a lot of points, in my opinion. Um, it's one thing to fight guerrilla warfare somewhere you know. Home field advantage and all that. It's far more impressive to be able to, to, be able to do that anywhere you go. That's what... That's, just, like, walk into a room and it's just like, I could hide there, 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 there. In pretty much every fight... Korax is in specifically after the heresy because he he lost, he was down to ten percent of his army, was still a problem. Well, damn. He was he was always, always outnumbered and never outgunned. He's very good at his job. It's really fast. It's really brutal. It's close to um, Napoleon's strategy, which is just I will come at you so fast and what supply lines? I'll just make do with what I have and keep going. It's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Now you mix in a little bit of guerrilla warfare and you have a problem. A b huge Cause problem. Because it's not an unbearable force coming for you. It's just, there's like 10 people here. I know that. But it feels like there's 100. And I it's really don't like that. Like, where are they? They keep coming and going. It doesn't, I don't know what to do about yeah, that. Yeah, he will take out your supply lines. He'll take you out. He'll just make, fi fighting him is a living hell. And that's before we get to him in and of himself. He's got a lot of weird powers. He's not a slouch one on one. He may also be a massive demon bird now. Well, not not demon, but warp. There's he's very strong. He is a creature now. He's been in the warp for the last ten thousand years, just slaughtering. Ah, uh, that'd do something to you. So he's still he's still probably loyalist, but mm, a little different mm, now. But probably you take all that together. It's, it's easy to see why he winds up in A tier. Just as as an army, he's something alone. He's still something. He's still something. He's not he's not full blown S tier. Just because there's, 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 I'll be honest, there are ones that can beat him, but there's a longer list of those that can't beat him, and that's what matters. Next up, Angron. Not gonna mince words. Right at the bottom. Right at the bottom. C tier. C tier. Because okay, here's the thing. As an army, it. There's only one person on this list who will be worse. That's it. He's one of the worst only because the way you beat Angron is consistently documented and it never changes. It is bait him into a bad fight. Uh, that happens. Everyone who's beaten Angron has done the same thing. Bait him into that spot that's better for you than him. Rinse and repeat ad infinitum. So he's not, like, uh, easy to beat in a 1v1, but it's very easy to Aikido direct him that direction. At, Look at that really strong guy over there. Don't you want to fight him? You want to fight him, don't you? It, yeah, you can... You and can, then the fight's over. You can put... Uh, that's exactly right. You can... Of all the Primarchs, Angron is the easiest and most consistently put into a really bad position by nobody's choice but his own. However... He's, despite being almost the, f no, the actual floor when it comes to command, <sighs> alone. That's a problem. Alone. He's, Huge problem. He's the one who could squat the Titan. Ah. Yeah. That, that, I had an inkling of a thought that mm, maybe that's, maybe that's the one. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah. He's, he's recently just split a planet in half by himself with the help of his patron god. Well, by himself. Still, nobody else has done that before. And it don't. let's also mention the fact that everyone within a certain vicinity just went insane. Eh, yeah. I, I, I mean... I'll, I'll give him and, his credit and for that it's one. It's effectively just him. That's, that's the thing about Angron. He may be a terrible commander, but just him alone is enough to make millions 
scream blood for the blood god. Do not do not just walk up to him and expect a 1v1. Yes, you, you yes. Will, it will be a 1v. You yes. are a corpse already. No, no, no. And you take that and the fact that he cannot die, he will be back in eight hours. Eight, no, it's eight days, eight hours. No, it's eight days. No, it's eight weeks, eight hours, eight days. He will always come back with, I think, eight bloodthirsters around him too. So he comes back with comes up with an honor guard too. Because why not? And you you can see how he's not like F tier, but he's certainly like stuck in C tier, just because of how he, much heavy lifting he does on his own. He literally. has one thing that he's really good at, but mm-hmm. like he's not very versatile. And you also have to give him some points for being the closest thing to being spawn camped that anyone on this list is gonna get. I mean, some of them had bad childhoods. Angron landed somewhere was put into Mortal Kombat and then had chunks of his brain removed and replaced with things that would only make him angrier. He's perpetually uncomfortable. If he's not in... Ra- like, there's... He's either perpetually angry and uncomfortable, perpetually angry and taking it out on everyone, or the one time he's felt peace was when he died. That's it. That's the only time he truly feels peace until he respawns angry again. So, so to be fair, it's me every time I play For Honor. <laughs> pretty much so that's that's why he's not that's why he's not f tier a lot of people love to sunder him into f tier but like come on i i'm i'm obviously because we're not going to go with the best case situation because the best case situation isn't angron anymore it's somebody else however you gotta give him just a few points for being spawn camped you know and also alone he's not a slouch he's he's not really good alone he's really good alone he's an army or two or three just by himself do not walk up to him yeah i mean i mean the the thing it took to kill him was that planet blowing up and several gray knights all around him just like every the deck was stacked as against him as possible and he was still kind of not losing not winning but not losing yeah he was able to hold his own for a little bit yeah so he gets he gets he gets it's just an obscene amount of points, putting him in high C tier. Next up is the only person who's as bad at him at command, and that would be Kurz. Conrad Kurz. Because he actually hates his legion. Oh, he actually hates he his legion. He actually hates his kids because they're weirdo criminals. Okay, fair enough. And he 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 ha- he's. But isn't he a weirdo criminal? <sighs> yes. But it's for a just cause, ah. if that makes sense. It's um, he has a Batman complex. No, I'm I'm going to spoil the Kurz video because it's a it's going to happen. The it's Night Lords are winning on on every front, um, and it's the really the best way to to cover his really warped sense of justice. Um, there is a person he will encounter or encounters who's about to like leap off a tall building, and he goes up and explains to them. That no, doing that is one of the worst things you could do, not because your life is gone and that was precious, but because each time somebody does that, it cements that society is getting worse, that there is no escape, it will never get better, your death is just reinforcing the rot. And that's a, that's a pretty fair point, you know? When, when, when society falls to the point where people think that I'm better off not even trying, let's just end it all. That that's only going to incentivize others to do the same. Yeah, it's kind of so, like the um, very morbid snowball effect. But instead of getting you a therapist, he will hit you with an RKO as you're falling off the building. <laughs> because you didn't kill, you didn't do it. I did it. <laughs> so it's a bit twisted. It's a bit twisted. I won't lie. But hey, you know it's it's pretty solid. Uh, he also picks up a crap ton of points, um, just as as a duelist. He's a consistent menace. He, every time... Okay, here's here's how Kurz works. Every time you talk about any other Primarch who was on the good side of things, Kurz appears at some point and was a major problem for them. Kurz has been a problem for, for them. Almost all of them, at some point in the story you'll hear, and then there was Kurz. I remember I and, remember in our Sanguinius video, and then there was Kurz. Mm-hmm. In our Lion video, and mm-hmm. then there was Kurz. In our Gilliman... Well, we haven't done uh, a yeah, Gilliman but, video. And then there was Kurz. There will be an and then there was Kurz. Uh... Who else have we covered so far? Dorn wasn't there, and then there was Kurz there. Yeah. Vulcan, there was also, and then and there was Kurz. He's he's really good. He's okay. I won't say he's won one v twos, but he has won one v twos against his brothers. He's he picks up so many points there, so many points. And also, even though he does hate his legion, it is effective. You know, it, 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 it in a weird sense because it it said that he took the most worlds with the fewest shots fired. 
because here's the thing. Space Marine Legions, terrifying. Their leaders, terrifying. Uh, Kurz is the guy in the corner who figured out all the ways you could use a potato peeler and live streamed that to you. So you know that's coming for you. A lot of worlds would just say, we're done. We're done. It's fine. Whatever. It's cool. Take it. Take it. I don't, I don't care. I'd rather not be potato peeled. Mm -hmm. You can have this. I'm charging my entire existence. It's going to be better under... It, it's better than fighting, honestly. Because fighting them wouldn't just be, oh, we're being conquered. It's, ah... Uh, uh, potato peeler. Yeah. Th these, are, these are kitchen implements being brought onto the battlefield. Why are there kitchen implements here? This is not great. Because so, why not? So he's, he's not incompetent. He just doesn't like his legion very much. <laughs> and also, uh, we can't ignore the elephant in the room, which is he did allow himself to get offed by a person as a big I told you so. An augmented person, but still a regular person. Very augmented, but still human at the end of the day. To be fair, he did just let it happen. He, he literally let it happen as a, as a big I told you so, but nobody else would on the list is the thing. And that's what I'm talking about, where even though somebody may be low on the list, there's still a lot. There's still just a different kind of problem for everyone. Like Kurz's biggest downfall was he was a doomer. Yeah, he's, he's a huge doomer. That's why he's going to be the first person in B tier, pretty much. Because he's not, he's not angry on bad. He's definitely not. He can still command. And one-on-ones yeah. he's a problem oh god but it's not just being rated on one v ones it's what were they made for generals for massive armies to take worlds and then keep them and compared to us of his brothers Curtis is only so so at it he's okay i mean when he gets your world a a your world will just give up and b you're probably gonna stick around because you, you know the consequences so Curtis is easily in b tier he also loses a few points just because terror works if your opponent is weaker than you, if their lateral throws are stronger, you will just reinforce them and glue them together. That's that's what committing atrocities does. If if the if it's a lateral throw or stronger, congratulations, you have just put them all on the same page. You've bolstered them. They're yes. now just like okay, well, and the problem we're doing is this now, army to army against a lot of his brothers, he would just be reinforcing them. They'd be doubling or tripling down in some cases. I would imagine Perturabo's legion of petty would not take that sitting down. No, not at all. Not at all. Next up is the Khan, and he's S tier for speed, but no, he's not. Aww. But but he is fast. He is very fast. He's so fast. He is probably the single fastest of the bunch, and I don't mean just on his bike. It's described, he, he can get into the zone. There's a whole thing. We're going to do an episode on him at some point. For now, we're just going to call it the zone. And it's described he's so in sync with his body and combat that if he thinks you're dead, it has happened. There's no thinking you're dead. Okay, I need to move my hand there to do it. No, it's just, I thought you're dead. That's it. You're gone. There was, there was no debate. And that speed gets him a lot of points. He's no slouch at all. He's in the web way right now. Just being a problem. Going very fast. Just, just being a, a problem. Um, the only real con to the con is... The only real con to the con is he's pretty... He, he doesn't like emperors. He doesn't like ruling very much. He's very laissez-faire about it. And that's just from the way he was raised. That's just the way he sees it. And so he won't have as iron of a grip as the rest of his brothers would on certain things. But he's still really good. He's still... Really good. Cannot be slept on. Wins very consistently. I hope he's one of the next ones to come back. But we'll see. If he does come back, though, it's it's not it's not S tier where everything would change. It's just things would get better. Yeah. So so I think he's A tier. I think he's, he's easily A tier where if he came back, he, the Imperium would get a really big buff. But it wouldn't be everything has changed overnight. But he gets an S in speed. Yeah, no, uh, yes. For speed, yes. If this was a... The list of speed, he was, he'd was he be at the top. Maybe think, Fulgrim would be there with him. That's it. Think, think your favorite Titanfall 2 speedrunner. Mm, that's that's Shagat Icon. That, that would probably be his hobby if he was still around. <laughs> Lorgar is up next. He's low. He's, I'm just going to be honest. He's, he's, he's fairly low, but... He's, you could make a religion out of this. The guy. But he does get some points, and actually quite a few, because if Lorgar takes your world, and also... You have to remember, Lorgar was slow about taking worlds. It was so much so that it was a problem. His dad was upset about it. You're not meeting your world quota. He, Speed it up. He did have world quotas. Oh. And, yeah, and, and he just wasn't meeting them. Like I said, this is what their dad made them to do. Like, my favorite thing about the Primarchs is 
the custodians' opinions of them because they, they there's this one guy Valdor. He's old. He's really old. He's he's I saw you get made old. Uh-huh. And and it's in one of his books, I believe. He's bemusing about them, and he he always had his reservations about them. But even he was shocked at how good at commanding they are. All of them are very competent generals. That's what they were made to be. So even for one of the best people in the Imperium to go, hmm, that's better than even I expected. <laughs> sure, okay. I see why dad made you. Whatever. Uh, Lorgar is, however, the slowest of the bunch at this. But I have to give him points because when he takes a world, it's pretty much not leaving. Yeah. I mean, think about it this way. He's such a good writer of fanfic that it's the thing holding the Imperium together today. It's it's his fan fiction about the Emperor that is holding every... It's, it's a key part in holding everything together today. It's like if somebody wrote a fan fiction about world peace and it actually brought about world peace. And yeah, sure. Does it take forever to spread a religion? Yeah, but once it's there, it's, it's, it's really there. there. So Lorgar is one of those ones where he's picking up planets at half quarter the speed of everyone else but they're not leaving and it's kind of concerning how much they're willing to die to keep them he's of all of them he's probably got the best grip on them he's he's probably got one of the best grips on his planet it's just it's just he's he's kind of a geek he's kind of he's kind of a dork he's a little bit uh he's still around he's in the warp doing stuff he's still writing Um, fan fiction i assume yeah for chaos this time he's he's swapped teams and he's a huge televangelist in the warp now Uh, he's And he's, he's, we have, Zinch wants you to send me cash so I can buy a boat. Hold on. If we're going to talk about Televangel, let's get it right. It's a jet. It's a jet. The Lord wants me to have a jet <laughs> because regular planes are tubes full of demons, I believe is the direct quote. Zinch wants me to have a jet. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. That's, that's Lorgar's Kurt <laughs> shtick. Uh, he, it's been 10,000 years in the warp with, if anyone has all four chaos gods looking right at them, it's Lorgar. So he's also fairly strong for that, but we've also haven't seen him like leave and use that, and he's also been terrorized by cracks in the war because that's that's been one of his hobbies, just messing with like, just screwing around with Lorgar. Well, he really doesn't like Lorgar. No. One of my favorite. To be fair, it uh, it doesn't seem like any any of them would like Lorgar after. Uh... It's kind of his fault. It's kind of all his fault. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my favorite, definitely not canon things, is Lorgar is just living in his house, and Korax is always drinking his milk. And so he will never have enough. Ever. He's always out shopping. It's that kind of relationship. Definitely not candid at all, but yeah, Korax. Lorgar pulls a, pours a bowl of cereal, goes for the milk, and there's like a thimble less, left in there. Mm-hmm. And Korvax is just sitting outside in the bushes, just like, <laughs> yeah. my bones are strong and yours are weak. Not enough calcium, I see. Yeah, he's also bald, so that lands him hard in B tier. Um, B for bald. B for bald. B for bald. B for bald. Yeah. Uh, next up, Mortarian. Uh, he is borderline cheating. <laughs> He's really hard to kill today. One of, of all the uh, ones who've turned to chaos, he's one of the most active right now. Waging a plague, plague war, curb stomping Gilliman on the side. He's a lot to deal with. And the problem when you're fighting Mortarian as an army is it's not just ah, space marines or ah, him, but it's the plague itself. It's, you know, that one scene <laughs> from the Prince of Egypt? I send a pestilence. Of it. Yeah. It's him. That's it's, him. That, that is what... What an amazing song, by the way. I love the soundtrack. But yes, that is what you are facing. You're facing the 12... It's... It's bad. It's bad. So it's, it's bad. It's... Not only do you have to deal with the regular problems of fighting Marines, you now also have to deal with disease control. Oh, it's, and then, that's without mentioning that his marines kind of don't feel any pain and kind of have a much harder time dying, and he himself is in that same boat, and he's on the high side of B. He's it's like, all on the high side of B. It's like you're playing the division. Every single enemy is a bullet sponge. I can't kill them. Yeah, yeah pretty much. He's, he's I, I don't know if he's better than Kurz, but I will say he's high B. He's very high B. Um... I, it feels like che- it feels like cheating and counter cheating because he did kill Gilliman again. It's just a thing he did. It's a thing. But also he had Dad looking directly at him, which Gilliman also had Dad looking directly at him, so he didn't die because heaven forbid Gilliman die again. But he he's he's kind of he's not a full blown jobber. 
the the jobber of the bunch is going to show up later, but he does occasionally get treated as a look how strong this is, and I don't uh, like, I've never liked that. He gets warped a bit. He's not the one who gets warped the most. There's there's other people for that, but he, he occasionally gets that treatment. That's unfortunate. I like more Terry. He's got he's got an amazing model. He's got amazing books. So he's doing great. He's doing <laughs> the model himself. gives him at least ten extra points. Yeah. Oh oh. Oh yeah, so easy, easy B tier. Whether he's there with Chris, it's up for you to decide on who would win that engagement. But regardless, um, definitely not beating the con though. Oh, that's unfortunate. I, I don't. The con's staying in A tier. He's too fast for him. Yeah. Well, the con did beat him before. Oh, didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, and if there was a rematch, I'm pretty sure it'd go the same way. The con's a lot. Next up, Peter Turbo. Um, this one's tough. The thing about Peter is he really shines if he can get you where he wants you. Just ask about the Iron Cage. He's a very scary commander. He's, you know, he's he's not as scary as his brothers if he, it was just him on the field, like one-on-one, -on -one, but it doesn't matter when he's just... He would be the one who'd lose 90% of his army in a fight and have it at 100 the next. He's that much of just cold calculating machine he's really good at long painful wars he's really good at defense it's very good at see that's where the whole thing is siege or fortify those are your two options yeah and so for that reason i think he's he's gonna have to wind up in a fairly low a but still decent like he's really good at attrition warfare but if you're doing anything else and 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 here's the thing about it it's his army is terrifying but but there are other Primarchs, so if they just get their hands on him, it's... It's kind of over. Like, the Khan versus him, if the Khan gets his hands on him, it's, 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 it's a different problem. I mean, have you looked at Peter Turbo? He doesn't look, like, very fast, dude. No, he's not, but he's also in... He's probably one of... The, he's up there with Mortarian, as, as far as taking blows. Mm. So, you don't need to be fast if you can just... Absorb, be tough. Yeah, you can just absorb the hit and keep going. Yeah. Not to mention he's got like Terranid ships with the obliterator virus. So yeah, it's 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 he's he's a problem. What is he doing? What isn't he doing? Fair enough. Whatever it takes to win. Fair enough. He's an unending tide, so he's gotta be A tier. Next up, the L Johnsons. He's the newest one on the block. I mean newest because he ju he just woke up a few months ago. This is fairly new. He's still rubbing the sleep out of his eyes. Yeah. However, he before he may have been lower just because he was fairly he wouldn't share his plans with people because he was so positive he was that guy he just wouldn't and he was also very paranoid extremely paranoid. Um, but ever since he's woken up, it seems like they've tempered that a lot. They've made him a lot calmer of a person. They've also given him the ability to telefrag places. So all those buffs put together, he's squarely an A tier. He's before he was really powerful. I'm talking when the whole heresy shook out. One of the first things Horus did was make sure the lion's over there. Just, Get him away from what I'm doing. Just he will safe. cause me problems. Just to be safe, let's make sure he's over there, please. Just, just we need this to keep going. Um, so he's he's definitely square and a tier, especially with the new stuff he's got going on. And we haven't seen it all yet. He's got new gear and new powers, but we haven't fully seen him back against the wall kind well i kind haven't of. seen i haven't seen a lot of him but i i know that like for a fact he's got like the emperor's shield for some reason oh yeah he fed it to angron oh <laughs> angron's a, a lot of the chaos ones suffer from we need to show how strong this is throw one of them at it <laughs> especially with angron because he'll be back he'll be there, there's no consequences he can just die now on to the next person who keeps horse up at night Sanguinius. Sanguinius. I don't need to justify this one. It's easily S tier. It's 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 S for scary. It's because vampires are scary. Well, I was gonna say S for Sangy, but he's not scary. Well, he's a vampire. Vampires are scary. Well, Haven't you seen Castlevania? There's a lot of art of him, and yeah, I mean, from our perspective, cool. But imagine being the perspective of one of the dots facing him. He's scary. Yeah, scary. Um, but anyway, you know, to be fair, I justified everyone else. He's He's got such a long list that puts him there. When Gilman was building a budget Imperium, he was the first guy he went to as your kind of budget emperor. He's not the best tactician of his brothers. That's kind of a fact. A lot of his stories involve him just going in. 
but uh, he's so successful at that. He's it's it, it's Angron if he had like common sense. It's Leroy Jenkins if he didn't die a second he, after screaming his he, own name. Yeah, pretty much. He can fly. He can see the future. He can fight for days on end without any issue and he does all of the above without a hair falling out of place i'm talking in all the art of ha- we have of him there's one bit of art that has him looking bad and it's when he's dead that's it that is the one time he's not looking flawless and i For don't the think rest of it it's a l'oreal commercial and i think it's really really unreasonable ex- to expect someone to look good when they're dead i yeah. mean you're dead if anyone could pull it off it's sanguineous <laughs> He's the fallen angel. He's the one horse feared that Chaos preferred over him. And he's clearly a favorite, not just of the Imperium, but of the writers and the fans. If he got even a millimeter stronger, we'd have to change his name to Gary Stu. But we don't. Because he's dead. And it's 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 pretty fair for the most part. It's it's a little it's a little ridiculous, let's be honest. He's he's the one who can do no wrong. But it's saying. Come on, it's saying he's he's an easy S tier. I I don't there's there's no justification. I'm fairly certain he's clearing everyone below him. That's just a fact. He is that guy. All of his brothers held him in that regard too. They always saw him as the best of the best when it came to this. He has so. just a scooch of protag syndrome. Uh, it was either you loved him or you hated him. So yeah, pretty much a bit of a protag syndrome. There is no better example for S tier. Pretty much. Now onwards to the next one found Magnus. He should be high. He should be he should be really high, but this is the one I said gets warped a lot. Because if you write Magnus mean, it's over. And so you have to write Magnus fairly stupid. Despite him being one of the smartest Primarchs, you consistently have to write him and his sons fairly stupid or it's a not satisfying book at all yeah because it's just them solving the problem and then it's just okay magnus encounters primark throws his army into space <laughs> and that's that's the entire book it's two pages it's kind of it. it's 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 like it's like mewtwo it's just like uh, but pff, flick finger he's, gone problem he's go so bye bye powerful it's a problem um now I, I will be fair it's not it's not the writer's fault at all um, he's considered one of the top two psychers. I mean, this is during the heresy. He was considered one of the top two. He, he's he's big brain boy. The, the only one better than him was his dad. Yeah. So and 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 his, his dad engineered him to be almost as good as him. And his he's he's the one I was talking about earlier when I said some of them have very specific goals beyond even being a general. Magnus was meant to sit on that chair. That was his job. So he was, was supposed to be it wasn't one of even the golden throne. wasn't even necessarily lording over world after world and conquering them. It was, you need to sit in that chair and be like the best geek on the market, okay? So he's, he's, he's a very odd case. Um, he's also weakened by the fact that he's not complete, uh, thanks to somebody who's going to come up way later in the list. Uh, he's broken into a couple shards, uh-huh. so it's not a full Magnus pretty much ever. He's, um, he's a bunch of Magnus Catan. You know what? That's a very fair. That's a very fair description. Shards of men. Yeah, pr- pretty much. Some of them are good. Some of them are not. Some of them act independently, and so we. Uh, but here's the thing: at the end of the day, a fully assembled Magnus who has been learning for the last ten thousand years is no fun for any story. It would be a problem. It's you know the way Vader shows up and like he'll light his sword in a dark hallway for dramatic effect before slowly walking through and murdering everyone in a very it's it's very stylized. He he's a showman. Like we we can't debate this. Vader knows what he's doing and he's he's it's the love of the game that drives him at a certain point, right? But we're also just as aware he could look in a hallway and give everyone heart attacks and move on. Oh, no, he'd be more dramatic than that. He'd no, just no, explode no, their hearts. No, no, but I'm saying if Vader was raw to solve the problem. I'm talking, I need to get from point oh, to point if he B. Oh, if he was pragmatic Vader. It would just be, I look at all of you, you've all had strokes, moving on. That's <laughs> what Magnus would be if he was complete and somebody was writing him angry, basically. It would be boring. And so because of that, he's real strong, but also real weak at the same time. And his army suffers from the same fate. So he, I'm going to, mm, this one's a toughie. I'm going to put him in B tier. B tier? Only because, like I said, not complete. We're not dealing with a full Magnus who's angry. We're just dealing with, I mean, default Magnus is still a lot. Also, at the end of the day, he's a Primarch. They're all fairly arrogant, which is a decent enough explanation as to why he doesn't just 
win. Because his confidence can get the better of him. Sometimes. Well, he's like, yes, I could crush them all. Or, I mean, they always bullied me. For once, I can bully them back. So I'm going to bully them back. I'm going to shove you in a locker this time, Angron. Pretty much. So I, he has to go in B tier for those reasons. I mean, fully assembled? Are we talking about an entirely different human being? Yeah, pretty much. But I would honestly put that in the same category as Angron if he didn't get spawn camped. It's an almost entirely different thing. It's Mag- not going to happen. Magnus has almost never been that pragmatic, that yeah. cold. You know, he's always he's and even even the fights he lost. He, I'm not going to say Magnus is never trying in his fights because he really is. But there'll be sometimes he's getting the brakes beaten off him, and he's like, "Wait, guys, no, wait, wait, please, I can explain." I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. As he's getting the brakes beaten off of him, Russ. So, you know. It, it, he's a, he's a weird one. He's he's probably the most writer dependent one on this. Li- all of them. Again, this is a big game of my space dad's better than your space dad. It depends on the writer at the end of the day. But uh, yeah, I think I think high B tier. Probably I don't know if he beats Chris. I don't know if he beats Chris, but he's he's high B tier. He's flown about some maybe there. maybe maybe if he has the Skyrim spell detect life, so he can go me 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 me. Curse, I've got you. He's got pretty much every spell in the book, dude. Well, then he he, he, could, he could probably go me 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 me. His, found you, Curse. His his patron god is he's outwitted Zinch once. I'm sure once. Zinch loved that. Oh, actually, yeah, he did. Like, I, he couldn't be mad at that game recognized game. I was like, oh wow, okay, I see you. I mean, I was planning for this. Obviously, I knew you were gonna outwit me. This was part of my twenty step plan. But okay, sure. So Magnus, Magnus is a very odd case. I really want to do a Thousand Suns episode. Ugh. And also, he's one of those ones whose physicality, it really depends, not just on the writers, but him. Magnus can appear, he, like, the em- we kind of technically don't know what the Emperor looked like, because he could project however he wanted. But Magnus kind of does the same thing. So he could be an inch taller than all of his brothers if he wanted to. He just out of sheer petty. Just out of sheer petty. So, technically speaking, he's the largest and the smallest at the same time. Magnus is a very weird one to rank. I'm putting him in B. And that's where him and his army is going. And then I can see Perturabo straining himself until he grows an inch just to be an inch taller than me. That's exactly right. And next up is another all-rounder. In fact, the all-rounder. Can, can you guess who it is? It's the Blueberry Boy. It, 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 it's Gilliman. It's, it, it's, it's Gilliman. And He's got a bias. I will be perfectly fair here. He does get hosed by most of his brothers. That's just kind of a fact. He's not the best fighter. He's still a Primark. It's still a lot. He can still punch the 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 space marine out of a space marine. Yeah, but he's he's if if there's anyone here who's eh, and I like him a lot, it's it's Gilliman. However, because I'll be honest, Gilliman arriving it, it nets a lot of points. Don't get me wrong, but it's not the same thing as Angron arriving. It's so not the same thing. Especially considering Angon will just keep arriving. It's not even close. How? So I would honestly say he's probably one of the lowest ones if we're talking about that. However, there is not a single person in the entire Imperium, save for Dad, who can beat him when it comes to logistics. It, it, this is his thing. Microsoft Excel no, spreadsheets are his game. Nobody has a mastery even close and he picks up so many points because of that. It's ridiculous. It's he is a type to win the fight before it ever happened. And that's why it's a very specific thing. I'm a huge fan of that. However, if there is also a Primark that has gotten the most love out of all of his brothers, it's him. It's that one. Yeah. It's him. And and listen I, I'm an Ultramunes guy. I, I like my things. I like my pencils where they should be. I like my pens where they should be. And I, I love the the feeling of e- approaching battle and the deck is stacked. So, like, you know, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. That's true. But if the deck is so stacked heavily in your favor, you'll, you'll manage, you know? And that's the approach he takes. However, that does not stop Bandersnatch Guttersnake from getting a little bit too much love sometimes. He's occasionally been written to do some ridiculous things and just things that make no logical sense. He's also been saved by the god in the machine very, very often. However, you also have to... It's not, it's not any one person's fault per se. 
you have to remember they're kind of the poster boys of the setting. A, that's a big reason why he picks up so many wins sometimes when he shouldn't have. Even like, blue is such an easy color. And, and you look at most box sets, and it's 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 an ultramarine. It's set. blue. It's, it's, it's an ultramarine. Sometimes even the boxes themselves are blue. Exactly. Um, but the other reason he picks up so many wins so often is because he's just so. You took the most competent leader. In a group of people who have all sorts of family issues, left, right, and center, and ego issues. So, of course, he needs to be around because everyone else is relatively unstable. I'll be honest. I mean, of the bunch of them, he's the only one who had a mom. Ah. Of everyone here, he's the only one with a mom. That's it. That, like, a functional family unit, he was the only one who got that functional childhood he's the only one who got that so being the level-headed and boring one means that he just needs to be there for a lot of things and you can't really wipe him right plus uh, if anyone wants to fight me on me putting him in s tier you can't deny he's back now and he's changed everything and, and like no no no. He, are no. you really hitting the audience with jokes on you he's alive no no but here's 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 the exact logic <laughs> He is around, and through his sheer presence, whether you like the changes or not, things have changed. The entire appearance changed. It's not running as smoothly as it should, but we have Space Marine Squared. There's a whole new crusade that's bigger and badder than ever. He's fighting wars on every single front to the best of his ability. Sure, is the guy overstressed to hell and back? Yeah. Is he winning all those wars? No, not really. Is he a bit depressed that he went down as the weirdo square in the corner who couldn't crack a joke to save his life? Oh, definitely. But... Honestly, post waking up, they've made Gilman way more likable. Wait, because he's not perfect anymore. He's very fallible. He makes the worst jokes. <laughs> he makes the worst jokes. It's really depressing, honestly. And and him constantly having to deal with <sighs> I have to duct tape all of this together, don't I? Is such a fun dynamic. To be fair, I will give you that. I think of all of the Primarchs, he's the only one who has the ability to duct tape this all together. Yeah, he's he's he's, he's the, the only one with the skill set and the patience to do so. He's he's the straight man of the group. So for that reason, I'm going to put him in S tier, just because again, uh, it dad dad could die tomorrow and I'd do a good job. He's kind of proven it, you know. Dad didn't die tomorrow. He died ten thousand years ago. And he's doing the best he can. He's, he's changing it up. <laughs> Things and, are happening. And also, let's not forget, well, most of, the, most of the Primarchs did get one of their worlds. They did. And that was a whole kudos. Congratulations. Gilliman had a whole functional realm <laughs> that still functions to this day, despite him dying multiple times, by the way, and was so self-sufficient that when the, imp when the Emperor died, the next line of thought was, okay, so this is the new Imperium. He's, this is, of all of them, he's one of the best generals. He picks up an obscene amounts of points just there. Plus, with all the times he's been written, he, he, he gets he gets a weird number of points. Despite being the geek, he, he throws down. Some would argue harder than he should, but he throws down. Yeah, like I said, he punches the Space Marine out of Space Marines. Yeah, pretty much. So he's on S tier. I do think if Sangy arrived tomorrow, it would be much bigger of a change it'd be a very close uh well yeah because the thing about gilliman is okay everything's the trains are running on time this is fantastic right but people worship sangy I, I mean like in the same way they revere the emperor he's second on that list there are holidays named after him he's a, a saint for them so sangy's return would be a um, any of them coming back is a big deal. Sangy's would be the biggest of deals, and it would change the most things. Because Sangy is the only one who could walk up and say, "All of this is wrong. Please stop," and everyone would listen. They'd actually listen to him. Because even Gilliman can't do that. He, he has to just uh, sure Fine. worship him. If it works, it works. Worship the worst dad I've ever had. Sure, whatever. <laughs> and I had a good one at some point, but whatever. Sure, 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 sure. sure. I don't care. Next up is Dorn. He is no slouch on his own. The only thing that makes this tough is two words. The Iron Cage. It's, it's kind of it. That He's really competent on his own. He's really competent as a whole. It's said um, when he's in a position fortifying it, each one Marine he has is worth 10 plus. So... He gets a buff to defense. He, he's he's really good. He's also not bad at attacking either. He, he does his job to the best of his ability. However, Iron Cage. <laughs> 
Very few of his brothers have lost as hard as he had there. We'll say he's a very prideful dude. I mean, all of them are, though. So if, if, we're, if we're knocking for pride, we'd have to knock everyone for pride. Especially the lion, we'd have to knock for pride. He's going to go in A tier, though, just because... He is good at what he that, does. That's, that's an outlier. He doesn't get often put in that situation. <laughs> I, I, I don't think there'd be many Imperial Fist fans if he did. Uh, if Dorn were to come back, do I think it would be as impactful as Gilliman taping everything together? Or Sangy? No. no. Maybe they'd be uh, concreting it together. But, but I think it'd be high. It'd be I, think, I think it'd be a very... I think it'd be... He's a high A tier, probably. I'd say the... Probably the highest A tier we have so far. I, I'd say so. Next up. Uh, Vulcan. Do you want to guess where he goes? Best here. He's the best. Pretty much. He's the best. Do, do we need to explain? He seems to be the only Primarch who cares about, like, the human aspect of the Imperium, mm-hmm. and just for that, S tier. Well, and also he's the biggest and the strongest, and he can't die. <laughs> Let's not forget those well, three things. <laughs> if we want to power level him, yeah, sure. <laughs> Let's not forget those three pretty major things. I mean, the, the, the Salamanders are slow. That's like a known thing. They're slow as sin, but when they take a world, they're going to stick with them because the salamanders will stick with them. It's it's a known thing. Um, salamanders also don't fight for space, but for people, the only real con they have is you can... He cares about civi- civilian casualties, like you said. That's a very good thing. He comes from a family where people see civilian casualties as a, oh, can we minimize that? To sweet bonus points. And that's... That's a spectrum that's most a bit people of a, are on. Uh, yeah. So that's the one con he has. You can use civilians to great effect against him. But other than that, he's... But the fact that he cares. Yeah. He's an S tier both philosophically and power and the stuff And the stuff he's built. And the stuff Oh, yeah. He that's, also has, like, several infinity gauntlets running around. Yeah, that's not... Yeah. yeah. His, his return would be a whole problem. Next up, Fulgrim. Uh, he's, he's easily winding up in A tier, I think. He's really fast. Um, and he's an abject perfectionist. And I don't mean everything must be as, as as it should be, but in combat, it was said that when they fought, it looked less that like, you know, the mess of war and more practiced dances. It was, he's, he's, he's real good. He's real good at his gig. He's also outright killed one of his brothers. So that earns him a few points. And he has been doing what a lot of Chaos, the ones that fell to Chaos did, just kind of moping about in the warp, not really doing much. But Just like, am I really, did, did, was that worth it? <laughs> no, not fully, not that, but we just, you know, they're just in the warp mustache twirling. Oh, I see. Basically, that's what every that's what every single trade has been doing. Well, I would imagine Fulgrim being a patron of Slanesh is twirling something else. That's terrible. <laughs> However, <laughs> y- y- oh, that's terrible. He's very competent. He's very fast. He's going in A tier. Moving on. <laughs> I can't can't save that. Lehman Russ. Um, he's. I think he's got the best success rate against his own brothers. I mean, mano a mano. I mean, he was the emperor's butcher, was he not? Executioner. Yeah, he's got he's got the hot streak. Uh, he's no slouch at all. He, armed, disarmed, bare knuckle. He can win a lot of fights. It's re- there's there's. I, I love Primark fights because it will begin with one of them being put through a wall and then 20 pages later it's still going. And Lehman Russ is a big, big, big contributor to that. He is, he is, he brings a lot. He is them. Viking. Yes. Uh, his, his army is also no slouch either. They're very good. They're very effective. They work well together. Um, so, I mean, well, like I said, Vikings. He's he's he's, he's an A tier. I don't think there's any debate. There's here. no debate there. He's That's high. yeah. That make that makes sense. He's high A tier now. Is he? You know, and the way these are is it's like anything in A tier can like wash anything below it. It's not A tier in fighting because it's just asinine. No, but uh, yeah, easy easy A tier. Next up on the list is Ferris Manus, Mister Iron. It's Iron Hands. Iron Hands. Um, with literal iron hands. If Gilliman is overwritten, he's underwritten. That's unfortunate. That, the, the the real tragedy of um, Ferris Manus is there's just not too much to go on. He was he was the first casualty of the Horus Heresy. He Wait, was, he was the first he, casualty? He was the first one to die. He got taken out first. The first Primarch, yeah. And that's the biggest problem. It's like, where do we put that? The movie began. He's a guy in the Marvel movie. The movie starts. Well, we need to show Thanos is strong. So, bye, Loki. That's what he's relegated to. And and the worst thing know. is, before that, he's the one who rushed everyone there into that terrible massacre. 
he rushed people into the drop site massacre? He was that guy? That's him. I like Ferris Manus a lot, but this is tough. This is tough. Damn. Um, I guess he's got iron hands and an iron brain. I'm putting him in low B tier. B for needs more books. I'll, I'll be honest. Uh, I, I, Please characterize that so that we can respect him a little bit more. I, I want to respect him. I, and Don't get me wrong. I love the iron hands as a legion. As a concept, they're so cool. And like I said, in every episode we mention them, the people who have iron hands models probably have some of the best kit bashes of anyone. Oh yeah, because they're the guys who are just like mm. cyberpunk replacing bits and pieces with metal. Yeah, mm. I really love that design. Yeah, no, they're 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 high. It's uh. unfortunate that he's the Loki of the bunch. <laughs> yeah, it, there's just there's just not much to say. Um, let's see who is left. Uh, then we come to the arch traitor himself, the deadest of the dead, Horus. Uh, he's an interesting one because he's. One of the best leaders of, of all the brothers. He's 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 really high up there. He's very charismatic. He's very competent. He was the one the emperor trusted to lead his wars on his behalf. He's very good at his job. However, he was also, towards the end there, a foaming idiot who was the shadow of himself. Basically a marionette for the four chaos gods. He was, he was an overpowered, rabid uh, uh, war dog. He, exactly. And there was even a prophecy that, if well, there's two prophecies. If he lost, we wind up with what we have today. And if he won, humanity goes extinct in a hundred years under his madness. So, his ability to govern is dubious at best. If if that's true, we don't know how true that is. He lost hard. However, if any traitor was to come back tomorrow, he would be the worst one too. It, immediately, everyone's on the ropes. He would be the comma problem. Yes. Uh, so, I think for that reason, he's got to wind up in S tier. Uh, as an army... Um, when the Imperium was going through world after world in that great crusade, uh, the Ultramarines had quite a few worlds conquered. They had some of the most, but Horus had more. <laughs> so um, His thing was war. Yeah, he, he coordinated a whole heresy. He's no slouch in combat, beating Sanguinius, and then not beating his dad, but doing a decent job. Getting close. Close enough to getting, stick him in a chair for 10,000 years. And it's hard to be fair with him because, again, towards the end there, he was being, like, four gods looking directly at him. However, he's still a lot. He's he's, he's a ton. He was and, still a lot before that. Otherwise, and, he wouldn't have been picked as the champion. Exactly. And Abaddon's currently got all four chaos gods looking at him, and he's nowhere near that. Yeah. And for that reason, I think he's easy S tier. Um, it's, it's a good reason he's the deadest of the dead. There's no coming back from Again, that. Again, he would be the yes. comma problem. Ending with the first of the bunch to be discovered, Alpharius. Head of the Hydra, Ipsum, Lorem, Baca, Sussy. They're the single weakest Primarch by bounds and leaps. Information could not matter less if you're being fed a chainsaw, and that is exactly what happened to Altharius. With him reigning over nothing but death and obscurity, his presence today has been erased from imperial records, and if there ever was a traitor that truly accomplished nothing, it was him. And for that reason, he's running right to the bottom of the list, right in S tier. The only S tier Primarch, I might add. Even if he somehow faked his death, it wouldn't matter, as he has not been relevant competition for his brothers or the Imperium for years. Remember, this list is 100% empirical. There, this is facts and logic. There is no debate here. My space dad is best space dad. It's a fact. However, if you want to dispute these facts, go ahead and leave your version in the comments. <laughs> and as always, Thank you for watching. A very special shout out for our Legion that keeps us going. And we will see you next week for what is probably going to be a Night Lord episode. Probably. I hope so. I'm proud of you guys. Well, I, I know I'm going to get comments about him being in B tier. I promise, I promise you right now I will. And again, if it was a 1v1 list, it's different. It's a different. We have a whole different setup here. But uh, because we're looking at them as an army and he loathed his army... He's gonna he's gonna lose the points. I'm sorry, you can't you can't be effective if you hate the people you're leading. That's <laughs> just a fact. Also, the whole you know, cut my head off, please. Do it. it this will prove me right. I, I I've always known this. Come on, come on. Let's let's get to the chase here. You know. So yeah, that's that's what I'm probably gonna get the most in trouble for. Getting we'll assassinated to own the loyalists. 
<laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, thank you for being you.